Hey, welcome back. Ask Coach Nate, episode 13. Uh, we're going to discuss uh, bicycle racing for beginners. I know that during the COVID-19 lockdowns, uh, bicycle racing or bicycle riding has been more popular than ever. Bicycles are sold out, um, not just across the, the nation, but uh, around the world. The demand for bicycles was something that no one uh, had anticipated. So if you're one of those people who has either recently discovered or rediscovered uh, bicycles, perhaps racing is something that you are considering um, as soon as that comes back, wherever uh, you are uh, living. So why don't we discuss um, how you got into uh, bicycle racing, uh, Nate, and we'll, we'll start there. Yeah, I mean, I got into riding um, in high school because one of my cross country and track teammates rode mountain bikes and raced them. So he like recommended that I try mountain bike or try cycling as a method of cross training. So I, I got into it just for, for fitness and as a secondary activity, which I maintained through high school and college. And then late in college, I started going to the gym a lot more and getting a lot stronger and um, put on a few pounds of muscle that really paid off in my cycling. Like as a runner, I was like, all right, but I wasn't great. Um, but I got much, much stronger on the bike and found that whenever I ran into somebody out on the road, I would always be as fit or fitter than them, um, including some of the people that like raced uh, locally around around UC Berkeley. And so when I was finishing up with school, I decided that I would try to get some type of work that would allow me to train and try racing. And so I, uh, I don't know, just gave myself a shot to see how I could do a racing and that ended up working out pretty all right. <laughs> yeah. So, so let me, let me see if I, I hear this correctly. So in high school, you're in track and in track and field, right? Yeah. Yeah. I and ran then, like running was my primary activity all through high school and most of college. It was just like the fourth year of, of college where I really started to focus on cycling. And then, uh, were you like into bicycles when you were, you were younger? Was that something that you enjoyed or? I mean, I used to ride around town just to like get to and from school or the library and, and just like for mobility as a kid, but I never got into it like as a sporting activity. I, di I didn't get into sports until high school when I got into running. Yeah. But when I got it, when I picked up cycling in high school, it was primarily as a training activity. Right. And then the United States, like, yeah, we don't really have until recently um, bicycle racing, something that is a, uh, a high school uh, sport. Although I'm very happy to say Berkeley and uh, in California that has changed. There are actually now high school mountain bike racing teams, which we're both very, uh, very involved in. Right. OK, yeah. so you're in track and field. Then later in college, you decided to do road biking and transitioned from running. And you're like, hey, I'm actually really good at this and then what was the next step did you do amateur racing yeah i mean anyone in the u.s or, or anywhere has to start with amateur racing you have to like show that you're fit enough and can race strategically enough to be successful at it before you can have a chance at doing it professionally so i started just racing locally for a few years and then like as i got into the higher categories i had opportunities to go race and do like regional u.s races like some of the stage races that would attract like strong amateur teams and also professional teams um and you know just work progressively up the the ladder as it were until i was on um some teams that you know would just go to all the professional races in the us um and so that, that took several years and there's a you know there's a lot of learning to be had as you're getting into racing and you can keep doing it for five, six, 10 years even, and, and still be learning things and getting more skillful as a, as a racer. Um, and yeah, early on, a lot of it's just like basic technical skill, but over time, like, just like anything, you can um, get much more strategic and like uh, thoughtful about how you do it so that you can increase your chances of success. So how did you decide to make the, the specific transition, right? So you're in track and field, you're like, hey, I'm actually really good at this. I could see my, my times and stuff. Did you just sign up with USA Cycling and go to the early? Yeah, course? so hey. after, I was, yeah. after I was done with school, I like had an idea from my time on climbs and from having a power tap, like what my power is like. And I was like, oh, like I have a chance at being decent at cycling. And I figured if I could keep continue to increase my power for a little while and get better, I would maybe do well. So I the first race that I signed up for was in May 
And so like in January or February, I bought my racing license, but I, I thought in my head, like, oh, I should keep training, maybe do some group rides, get a little more skilled at like pack riding before I just like jump into a race. And <laughs> it's actually an awesome story. My first race, I signed up for the Modesto road race. I don't even remember why I picked that particular one. I think it was just because of where it was in the calendar. It was like a week or two into May. And I thought that would give me enough runway to like train and be comfortable, like getting into a race, but I went the wrong like I, I thought it was on Saturday. It was actually on Sunday. So I drove to the race venue on Saturday morning at like, you know, 7 a.m. or something. And of course there's like nobody there. And it's just like podunk, like farm country in central California. And I was like, oh no, like what, did, what happened? And so I, luckily I uh, had reception. So I like called the race promoter because their phone number was just like on the, the flyer. And they're like, oh, the road race is tomorrow, but the crit is today. And I was like, okay, cool. Uh, like, is there room in the cat five field? And they're like, yeah, it's not full. And so I just drove the like to 10 miles or whatever it was uh, from like just outside of Modesto in like the farm country to like downtown Modesto. And my first race was the Modesto crit, <laughs> even though I planned to do the road race. And then I did the road race the next How, how did you do? Uh, well, in the crit, I knew that crits were riskier. And so I was like, okay, well, I just want to get out of it like with a little bit of experience and I want to get out of it safely and it's probably going to be safe. Like there's probably not going to be a crash, but sometimes there's crashes. Like I was just aware enough of that fact. So in the middle of the race, I was like kind of aggressive and like kind of attacked a few times and rode off the front a little bit. Um, since it was my first race, I didn't know fully how fit I was compared to other riders. So in principle, like if I had known where things were at, like I might've um, like tried to win it or something like that, but I was just messing around and eventually just like slotted into the field and then like finished kind of off the back of the main cluster. Cause I wanted to give myself an out in case there was a crash in the last lap. Um, and I just wanted to finish safely. Yeah. And we should explain for people who, if you're really new to bicycle racing, uh, a criterium or, or a crit, um, is, a is a really popular format actually in the United States. They do have them in Europe. They're not quite as popular. And generally it's where you take like a downtown section or some area where there's a couple of city blocks and they, they, they kind of block off the car traffic. So people go around in, in a, a circle and laps uh, around like a four corner uh, uh, course. Sometimes they can have a little extras. I think the Modesto one even has kind of an L or something to make it a little more. Yeah. Yeah. L shapes are probably some of the most popular Yeah. And they, they tend to be dangerous because the bike's really close and you can hit the curb and there's a lot going on. We're in like a typical road race. Uh, it's not the same kind of thing, but of course they're cheap and easy to set up. So there's lots of criteria around the United States. All right. So you did the, the cat five crit. Yeah. And then that's fine. Added. And so, oh, we should also explain to you in cycling, how the categories work. Yeah. So basically when you're a new rider, you start out at cat five, which is basically the like total beginner category. As you accumulate more experience, you move up in the categories and as you get better and better results and you're like on the podium or you win races or you're in the top five, you accumulate points that allow you to graduate from one category to the next. And eventually you end up as a cat one if you get to that point. Um, and in the US, there's no difference between being a cat one and being a professional racer, except for what team you're on and whether or not the team has a professional license, which allows you to do certain races that you might not be able to do as an amateur individual athlete. Yeah, I, this for me is the part where cycling starts to become uh, uh, almost inscrutable as an outsider is like, there's all these categories and different races and do you need a team? Like it, 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 like I remember looking at it when I was just in a riding trying to like make heads or tails of it. Um, and it seemed really complicated uh, as, a, as an outsider. So, so I think, I would, I would simplify for anybody, if you're new, you've never done a bicycle race, you maybe rode a century, you've done organized rides, but you've never been into like Olympic racing under a USA cycling umbrella, which is the governing body that manages uh, cycling for the Olympics. And that's why it's done a certain way through this organization, because it's an, an Olympic sport. You start out in category five and you don't need a team. You don't need any experience. In fact, I think it's actually quite funny. Like you don't even need any license or any training or anything. You just kind of show up at any race that is having a cat five category and you race in that, in that category and uh, hope for the best. <laughs> so, right. You, 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 how long did it take you to progress from a five to one? 
Um, so by the end of the first year, at that time, you needed to do 10 races to graduate from five to four. So I barely finished 10 races the first year of racing, which was like from whatever, like May through, you know, September or something like that. The next year I graduated like up to being a cat two and I was racing in like the P12 fields by like April or May. Um, I think April. Yeah. Cause I was doing sea otter as a cat two and I was, it was, it was kind of funny. That was like my first one, two racing was at sea otter. And so we did the road race and rock racing was there when it was like just starting out. And so it was like, uh, um, right before they had, you know, all these like former Tour de France contenders racing the tour of California. And they were like at sea otter, like, <laughs> uh, along with a, a few other professional teams. So that was fun. I got to race with pros, like right off the bat just like exactly. less than a year from when I started. Yeah. So you, in the, in the race, there were professionals at Sea Otter and, and Sea Otter is probably one of the most famous, I guess, amateur bicycle races in the U S like a lot of people I know have heard of it who aren't into. Um, yeah. It's a cool like, uh, event. Cause it's like both a bike festival and the, like all of the vendors, like all of the major bike companies show off a lot of their new products there. And because all the sponsors are there, they attract a lot of their like top athletes. So you'll see like, you know, the, some of the world's best mountain bikers and a mix of road racers all like at the same venue in a way that's like kind of unique in the sport. Yeah. All right. So, so that's how, that's how you went about it. Uh, and we've explained for people how cat five is where you start. You don't need to be on a team. You don't really need anything other than a bicycle and you just kind of sign your name and you're good to go. But like, what would you recommend to people who, who, obviously you're watching this video and put a little bit more uh, research into figuring out how they want to race. Like how should they get started? Yeah. I mean, I think that anyone that is interested and thinks that it would be exciting or fun to try racing, you know, should be open to it. And if you have any interest, like it's, there's not a lot of downside to trying it, but it is good to like have an idea of what it looks like. And so I would look up, you know, some, videos on YouTube. So you just like kind of know a little bit what it's going to feel like when you're racing and to have some expectation of like how close you are to other riders and how the dynamic is. But the biggest thing is like, in your thinking is like plan ahead a little bit and don't just like sign up for a race, like that weekend, the moment the, the thought comes into your head, unless you already have a good bit of experience, like riding groups and doing group rides and like pace lining and descending with other riders so that you, you, you want to make sure that you can safely ride in close proximity to anywhere from like 10 to 50 other riders and um, do it, you know, safely and confidently and um, know how the dynamic of the, the pack riding is going to be. But yeah, as long as you have like a baseline of fitness and you have some basic pack riding skills, um, I would maybe think about looking at the race calendar and maybe calling up the local bike shop or reaching out to the local um bike clubs and seeing like what they think would be some of the easier races to get into just so that it's like um a good experience for you because it's not like an extremely technical course or extremely uh climbing intensive and maybe you're not a climber so it's not going to give you like the best opportunity to have you know a good experience because like there's no point in showing up uh to a race where you're just going to have a bad experience um and that also i think goes into it where like if you're interested in racing, I would plan on giving yourself a shot at at least a handful of races. Don't just go and like sample one or two races and then extrapolate like what all future racing might be like. Cause like, if you, if you do a lot of racing, like probably half of the races that you do are going to be like, I don't know, not, not that exciting. Cause like somehow it just doesn't work out that well. Um, and, and like a lot of the, the good experiences that you have in racing will be, um, I know the, the, the exceptions to the rule where it's like racing is just hard and like you're you're not going to win most of the races that you go to no matter how good you are <laughs> you know from what i've seen uh generally what people do is they find the races that are closest to them uh, which isn't a bad way to do it so we know because we with the berkeley bike club we manage the berkeley hills road race the largest field in that is cat five so it's lots of people who um don't race it's a very difficult course um, which is interesting because Berkeley, for whatever reason, attracts people who are in Cat 5 but are incredibly strong riders and do really well uh, on that on that course. It's always very, very surprising. 
But there are other local races in the Bay Area that are in downtown, like in Oakland or in San Francisco. Um, used to be some races in Berkeley. And those two also have like really big fields of category five for people that are just trying it out. So at least what I've seen from those races, because they're easy to get to, it's low commitment. You could just kind of go down there and, and check it out. I think uh, the biggest, I think I was still in Cat 5. I think the biggest Cat 5 field I ever was in was in the Oakland Grand Prix, which races through downtown Oakland, which I thought was an excellent race. I loved it. It was like an urban crit through crazy downtown Oakland streets, but like there's still like construction equipment abandoned on the road and dumpsters with cones and stuff. It, it was like, what I loved about it. Like it was difficult course, not quite the safest course, but that was what I thought made it kind of fun. A giant cat five field, like 50 or 60 feet. It was huge. Yeah. Um, I think like the officials even made us do a lap or two as a, as a group, just so everyone is comfortable. The fact that the course, um, was at Oakland and yeah. uh and I remember like um the race took off and uh I had a lot of experience at that point relative to everyone else and so after a few laps there was a group of people in the front who were racing and we had some idea of what we were doing and I remember looking behind me and there's a giant group of kids like either with like flats or on the side or getting pulled out or they just were tired and out of gas after a couple laps and, and couldn't couldn't keep up um it was really fun. And so, yeah, if you do live in an area where they have a race like that, like, I think that's exactly the right way um, to get into it. At least that would be my, my kind of uh, two cents. Um, yeah. What other things should people look for? Like fitness wise, right? I mean, that was the thing I saw was a lot of people like they, they, they struggled. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of people get into racing um, because they ride a lot and they think it would be fun, but even just like, minimal high intensity training can help get you prepared for the demands of racing. Cause even at the lower categories, like a lot of people that you might be riding with ride a lot of fast group rides. They do maybe hard interval work and they're able to maintain much higher uh, ranges of intensity. So it's like crit racing is a per perfect example where you might have like a pretty fit kind of weekend warrior type of rider whose threshold is like 200 Watts or 250 Watts. And that's like plenty of aerobic fitness to like get through a lot of um, like beginning races, like cat five races. But if you're throwing in like 500 to 800 watt sprints every like 30 or 40 seconds coming out of every turn in a crit, like that's a very different experience than just cruising around at like to like 150 to 300 watts 90% of the time. So it's like, you really are gonna want to do some like basic preparation so that you're more comfortable and you can uh, get more out of your experience racing. So like, even if all you did was like the month before you get ready for your first race, just doing like sprints on Tuesday and doing like threshold or VO2 max intervals on Thursday, and then doing like a group ride on the weekend with your buddies or like doing a fast kind of race ride every other weekend, like that's going to make you like so much more prepared than just riding a lot and like riding hard sometimes, but doing it in a very unstructured kind of non-specific way. Um, and, and just generally, I think a lot of people benefit from even just like that most basic type of structure. Like if they really want to get fit, even if it's just to like, I don't know, do a group ride with their buddies, uh, doing a little bit of focus work pays off a lot. So did a lot get, of people that- Did you get dropped in any of the early races that you did? Uh, not until like, the pro races and only then like dropped from the front group like that first race with sea otter uh i remember like it was very dynamic it's like a single lane road in the hills behind monterey like above the racetrack there and so it's not that there's not a lot of visibility it's not that wide open and it's very rolly so there's a bunch of like 10 to 50 meter climbs throughout the whole course and like half an hour in I just looked back and there was like 12 of us off the front and there was a gap and I didn't even know how big the gap was to the group behind us and like I had pulled through but I like pulled off and somebody yelled at me to keep riding because they knew that we had a gap and I was at the front and I hadn't seen that and then I looked back and I was like oh I guess this is the break um so we rode the break together that was really fun and challenging but by the time we were like going up the last climb, like I immediately got popped off the back and finished like five minutes down on the winner. <laughs> cause, cause I was like, I don't know. Uh, 
I think probably not so much like fitness. Like I was pretty fit. Like I think I could have just done better if I knew how to race better and like knew how to manipulate the the um, situation riding the brake better, which I obviously got much better at. But why well, would prepare anybody like unless you were a track and field star in in college or in high school to get dropped? Like yeah. I think the first first race I ever did, uh, I. I and I, I I had thought I was prepared, right? I did some race clinics, but like I just totally got dropped at, at the at the beginning. I think it was a combined four and five field two, which also was um was like a shock, right? Because five is people don't know what they're doing and they're kind of having a good time. It, it's they tend to be kind of relaxed, but also whack wacky in their competitiveness because no one knows what what they're, they're doing. <laughs> Like in four, they've, they've done some races, they know what they're doing and they went really hard in the beginning. Like I had never seen anything like that before. And I just got, I got totally, uh, totally popped. Yeah. And then it probably took a couple more races to where I was even able to just kind of like hang, hang on and get through, get through the uh, race. And so I, yeah, I would prepare anybody like, unless like you really are gifted and, and have confidence in your, uh, in your, your fitness. Um, that just be prepared for for that to happen and that's how you learn what you need to do and and work on and and train and some of it is our fitness and some of it's mental like you know Nate was just saying right like probably could have kept up but just like just takes experience yeah I mean that's one thing that's really fun about bike racing is like you can work for years on getting fitter and you can work for years on getting better at racing and just knowing how to read the race better and how to like divvy up your effort throughout the race Uh, and I feel like those are the two things came to mind as you were speaking just now one of them is that like if you're preparing to race and you want to like have a good time doing it it can be really helpful to practice like hard baselining with some friends and or finding a race ride or like a fast group ride so that you know how to like get a good draft and safely follow wheels and you know how to like pull through and also how to like conserve energy like if you're riding with people that are fitter than you and you're doing like a fast pace line with like four or five other riders if you're not as fit as the other people a lot of beginners will like put in a lot more work than they should be um and then uh what was the other thing that i was thinking of oh just like if you are really fit like a lot of people just put in way too much work uh and that's definitely something that i did a lot when i was younger or like when i was a newer racer because i was for, for a while i was like much fitter than the people that i was racing against and so it um didn't help me to like learn good racing habits until I got into the one twos and I had to learn how to actually race with people that were as fit as me. Uh, Likewise, if you're not as fit, like you can learn how to race effectively just by like being strategic about uh, conserving your your energy, getting a draft, knowing how to like just stay in the group over the climb so that you can recover after the climb. There's a lot of things that um, you can do to like make the most out of your fitness and your abilities at whatever end of the spectrum you are at. Absolutely. I think like, like you said, like work on your fitness, but I, I also think that like, and what I liked about bicycle racing was like, there was clearly a, a skill element to it. And uh, I'm not the most gifted um, fitness wise, but I really enjoyed racing. I liked bicycles immensely, felt very comfortable on, on a bike. And so, yeah, like I, I just was like, I'm going to be the ninja and figure out every trick in the book I can. And that can work in racing. It's not like running where it's basically your fitness and that's it like in cycling yeah you can kind of hide behind people and draft not use a lot of energy and you can get better at going through corners and there's all kinds of little things that you can do here and there to um conserve energy and improve um your chances of getting a good placement uh and that's why for me like i just tried to do as many races as i as i could i kind of felt like um there's no better way to learn than to than to do and that worked um, really well for me. So I think everyone has their own uh, kind of approach, but the skills part um, is, is pretty big. I think that dimension to it perhaps is larger than people might think um, yeah. um, in the beginning that it's all about fitness. And so, yeah, I think like work on skills, make sure you're real comfortable with the bicycle. I think like, you know, like ride with no hands, like all those kind of things, like that that will help you improve your skill i've even been told like water bottle drills because you are in the pack you're riding with people you're really close and you will want to take a sip of water and if you're not comfortable at doing that um you you it's something uh you'll need to be right because you need to 
to hydrate. So you need to be able to do that while you're got your eye on a row because you don't want to take your eye off the um, bunch at all. Yeah. And that's, that's something that a lot of like beginning riders don't think about much or practice. And it's like in an ideal world, you would be able to like drink without stopping pedaling and without having to like move around much at all on the bike, you should be able to like eat and, you know, safely point your bike and keep, you know, keep control of it. Even if your hands are off the bars, cause you need to like sit up to grab something out of your pockets and, you know, seriously skilled riders will be able to like put on or take off even leg warmers, like while they're riding, you know? So it's like, there's a, or, or like taking off rain jackets or putting them on. And you'll see that even at the high end, like going over climbs in the tour or like any of the big stage races, like they'll go up this big climb. It's cold, it's rainy, they're hot going up the climb, but then they have like a 10 minute descent. And some of the guys that can't throw a rain jacket on really quickly will suffer because they're like struggling to get it on and they lose like 40 spots going down the descent. And then they're like trailing off the back of the front group immediately at the start of the next climb. Uh, or they're cold because they couldn't get uh, adequately dressed. Obviously that's like a constraint or like a challenge that not everyone faces, but just being able to like eat and drink and pedal your bike at the same time is like a pretty crucial skill that if you're doing um, anything longer than a crit, like it, it's really helpful to just kind of practice that a little bit in training and um, just be aware that it's gonna be something you'll need to do. Yeah, there was a, there was a lot of chatter uh, over the professional season that uh, basic skills looks like something that professionals might need to focus on again. There were a lot of people that couldn't get the rain jacket on or struggled with uh, with certain things. Um, and if you watch some of the like really old cycling videos, which I love, like those guys all knew how to ride, right? Yeah. They were extremely comfortable on the bike. I think there was a larger focus on skills. There was less data and technology to understand fitness, right? So I think a lot more drills were on skills and there were just higher expectations but there's those hilarious videos with uh, eddie Merckx's team like opening bottles of champagne on the bike handle like they're like doing it no-handed opening a bottle of champagne like on the stem like it's wild like there's no way i could uh i could pull that off and then and not not look at the road too it's it's a, yeah it's and, amazing that's so bike skills matter yeah and also like all the things and so i think one thing that also comes up for me thinking about first time racers or people that are like newer to racing. And it's like kind of an exceptional activity that they go to like a few races each year, or it's their first five or 10 races. A lot of times people like hype it up in their head and they um, like overthink what it is that they should be like doing on race day or eating like before or during the race. And it's like every hard workout that you do can be an opportunity to practice all of the things, like whether it's like basic bike handling or basic like feeding and hydration on the bike. And any race that you do isn't necessarily that different than any like hard weekend ride that you would do on any other weekend. Maybe you just taper for it a little bit more. And then if you are practicing like good nutrition and good hydration on all of your training rides, then you can just automatically just be like eating and drinking and be comfortable, you know, doing that 40 or 50 mile road race uh, without going an hour and a half in and then realizing that you haven't touched your bottle and then like panicking because you're starting to get dehydrated unnecessarily. Um, so that's another thing that like, you don't necessarily always think about, but it's like, if you're just, just kind of reaffirming those habits in training every day, then when you're racing, it's like, you don't have to think about it. You're just, that's automatically going to happen. Um, and you can just focus on racing. Yeah, no, I, I think that's great. That's great advice. Me and Nate were chatting earlier and, and I like to joke that I don't think like, um, people find bike racing. I think bike racing finds you. And that might be true of like most organized competitive sports there's lots of people play casual street ball or they like to do some kind of like toss around the football in the backyard but to really be competitive generally it's you're you're with a group of people and they're like hey you you might want to consider uh going uh to do this because you're really fantastic at it right like we were even saying that in the united states the the, the county uh football star is the one who um, everyone thinks might have a chance at the, uh, at the NFL. Right. So, so for me, like bicycle, bicycle riding, like I would, I would think people should do a lot of group rides, get really comfortable with it. And, and if they feel like, Hey, I can hang on those rides and, um, I'm doing pretty good relative to other people that I, that I know, I think that would be the, the sign, um, that you should give, uh, racing, um, 
a try. Yeah. And it, and it's good to just know like why you're doing it and what you want to get out of it. Cause like some people do it cause they want to like get a good result. Some people do it cause they just want to like hang out with their riding buddies. And it's like a fun way to just have like a chaotic, like organized fast group ride. And like, they don't care if they come in second or 20th, but it's just fun to like go hard with people. Um, and then maybe, maybe eventually they get into like trying to get results or help their teammate get results. But it's like, I think a lot of times, um, just having like a clear agenda for what you're trying to accomplish. Like, are you trying to get fitter? Are you trying to have fun riding with other people? Are you trying to challenge yourself technically and physically and with your skills? And like, you want to learn how to race better just because it's like a, I don't know, it's like any skill. Like you could become a better painter or you could be a race car driver or you could be a bike racer. Like they all can potentially take practice and be satisfying to become skillful at them. Um, but I think it's good to just be like, kind of aware of what you're trying to get out of it so you can be successful at that, uh, whether it's winning races or, or some other goal that you have. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's, I think that's great advice. I think, I think cycling attracts people who like achievement. They typically are pretty type A. Um, you know, they want to try something that is, it's not easy. I don't think there's anybody out there who thinks, uh, uh, like a long, like a long group ride, most people think is something that's pretty challenging. Right. So if the idea is that you want to do that in a competitive way and like where the goal is to be the first person to finish across the line, like I think that it, I think that already self identifies you as someone who's who's rather uh, rather competitive, right? Yeah. So if those things are appealing, then obviously um, you should uh, you should definitely definitely try. Okay, we covered fitness, we covered skills. Uh, any kind of final last words for people that are trying to figure out if they want to race bikes or not? Um, I don't know. I mean, I think that we covered a lot of useful stuff potentially. I mean, obviously, people should like ask questions in the comments below if they have like other stuff uh, that we could reply to in written form or like in, in future videos. One thing I think about specifically this year though, is that it's really unclear what there might be early in the year. Like there, I think there are some races or some like gravel events that might be planned. They may or may not happen, but later in the year, there probably will be some racing. And I feel like for people that don't have races that they're comfortable doing or that there aren't maybe races for the first half of the year, I would just think about like being creative so that you can um, have like ongoing motivation and focus in your training so that you can set yourself up for a successful like racing campaign late in the year or next year. So maybe you like have a couple of intermediate term goals where you want to like try to set some PRs on some climbs or you want to really nail certain workouts through the spring so that whether or not racing is happening in, you know, May, let's say you could still set yourself up for like good racing in July or August or September. Um, just a unique feature of this year. Cause like, it's, I don't know, like it's an ongoing thing. You just, all, all the training like builds up over time. So you just got to keep at it. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Hopefully, uh, hopefully all kinds of organized events will come back sooner rather than, uh, rather than later. I think we're all, we're all hoping for that. Yeah. Well, well, that was great. That was really fun. I, I enjoyed that topic. Uh, so, Hey, if you like this content, like the video, subscribe to the channel and we'll be back next week. Later. Take care. Bye.